Now, another big question with respect to IBC CEO Ezra Chiloba. On the day that both President Kenyatta and Nasser Fadbara Raila Odinga committed to a peaceful election in August as the IBC holds a national election conference. But the Commission continues to attract criticism on a number of fronts, especially from the opposition, as they are caused to worry 55 days to the election. And what do you think? Is IBC ready for the election? Talk to us. The hashtag is the big question on Twitter. You can text us on double two four double two. Well, the studio now, Ezra Chiloba, CEO IBC, thank you so much for making time for us uh, tonight. Both President Kenyatta and Raila Odinga are committing, of course, the two main contenders committing uh, to a peaceful election. The President feels you should be given, as the Commission, that is IBC, uh, space to work devoid of criticism and politics. Odinga, on the other hand, saying IBC has improved, but not, not yet there exactly. First, do you feel under any pressure to deliver the election 2017? Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Hussein. Uh, I think to start, uh, we need to appreciate why we needed to have that national conference. Because for a long time, uh, if you consider the events that have happened mm -hmm. since last year, we had never stopped and reflected as a country in terms of what type of election we need to have uh, come August this year. So we thought it was important for us to rally all these leaders together and for us to be able to come up with a common position in terms of working together uh, for a peaceful and credible election. Mm -hmm. So I think up to that level, I think we achieved a lot today. Uh, the statements that came from the different leaders uh, were all in unison in terms of where we needed to go. Uh, we could have had, of course, differences in terms of uh, certain things. But again, we also know what our role is uh, to ensure that at the end of the day, when the election is done, we can look back and say, indeed, we did our part to deliver a free, uh, okay. fair, and credible election. Right. Yeah. Well, the president has been very specific, saying IBC should be given space. Right. So, do you feel under any pressure in delivering the election? Well, we know that the constitution gives us the mandate uh, to do what we're supposed to do. What the president says, uh, or any other person says about the commission, that's, uh, not really uh, that's really different. Okay. Uh, ours is to keep our eyes focused on the ball. And that's. Uh, so you're not under any election. pressure from any quarter? We're not That's under any pressure. Uh -huh. The only pressure that we have is whether we actually get, we're getting the country together to get to that particular point. Right. right. Now one of the things uh, uh, Odinga, who was at the national conference today, s talked about uh, was the award of the 2.5 billion barrel printing tender to al Right. Uh, in fact, he said and claimed that the firm had met with senior jubilee officials in Dubai before sending representatives to Kenya. In other words, saying oh, he wants this terminated again. First, how do you respond to that? That jub senior jubilee officials are behind this. Well, uh, if you understand the procurement law uh, in this country, there are certain procedures that have to be followed. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, as the accounting officer of the institution, my duty is to be faithful to what the law says. I can tell you, I've been at the commission for the last two and a half years. Mm -hmm. We've done business with Al Gurea in the sense that we've been able to procure ballot papers from them for all the violations that we've held since 2014. And not on a single day have we ever had discussions with anyone out there about or giving the deal to Allegrea. It's the due process of law that we've been faithful to up to this particular point. No single politician, no single broker or whoever has ever come to my office asking that we give a contract to Allegra mm -hmm. is all due process and all that process is documented. So whatever else, else it might have been said or is being said because I read a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, even about myself and I wonder mm -hmm. is that really uh, it out mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. So there's what is actually happening and what seems people think is happening. But there's also what people are seeing. Yes. And how uh, that, that tender has been marred by controversy all through since right. it was first awarded uh, uh, I think late last year, right. 2016. Right. Since let last year, that was the first time uh, you, you ordered uh, the tender was awarded to Al Hurair. Right. Uh, the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy, then the opposition challenged it in court, and Justice Odunga nullified the tender for failing to comply to, uh, with election laws. You then opted to restrict the tendering, which was again w awarded to Al Hurair, isn't it? No, it wasn't awarded. It was terminated before uh, even the evaluation was completed. No. But at uh, the PPOA, right. uh, the review board again nullified the process. Right saying IBC's procurement engaged in underhand dealings, including selling specifications to benefit other companies. Okay. I would rather this give is you... A, this is when Roskett yeah. went to appeal there, isn't it? Right. I'll give you a little bit of background about this, uh, this tender. 
In 2016, as early as August, we prepared specifications to go out for an open tender, open international tender for the, pro for the supply of ballot papers. And it's that process that led to the award of the contract to Allegra mm -hmm. sometimes in uh, October. October 2016. Uh, yeah, October 2016. But you remember the commissioners had given notice of resignation sometimes early uh, October. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the time we signed the contract, according to the decision by Justice Odunga, there was no commission in place. And the reason that tender was terminated, if you read the judgment, it was a fact that there was no commission in place at that particular time. And that's why the tender, uh, the contract was invalidated. Not because of impropriety, not because of other aspects that, uh, other than the fact that there was no commission fully that, constituted. That judgment talked time. about the tender not really complying with the election laws. Actually, it's the other way around. What the judge said was the tender, we go back to either restricted tendering or any other method of uh, uh, tendering as long as we also comply with the election's law. There was an argument in the court that uh, 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 we needed to comply with the election's law, but the arguments that were presented by the applicants in court, the judge never went into the merits of those arguments. So towards the end, he just said, and when you do these things, please make sure that you comply with the election's law. But we exactly. do not understand. Yes. Exactly. So <coughs> after that, after this judgment was made, this is in sometime in February uh, this year, uh, after that, you, you were actually appealed that decision, isn't it? Yeah, it was first appealed by, by, by Al Gray itself. Mm -hmm. Then we also went in uh, 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 to appeal. On the Court of Appeal grounds. again. Yeah. Yes. The court of, court of Appeal again upheld the decision by the, yes. by the High Court. And what did they up, uh, uphold? That indeed at that time there was no commission in place. Right. So, so my, my question is why didn't you <coughs> uh, let the process of tendering start again the way you wanted it to happen that time right. immediately so that you avoid single sourcing or restricted tendering. Right. Why wait until so late when you had no time? No. What happened immediately after that decision was rendered and uh, we had a new commission. So what the new commission wanted to, uh, to do was to be appraised in terms of what that tender entailed. And we gave them a briefing. We took them through the specifications of the tender. And they requested a certain adjustments be met to the all the specifications of the ballot and the results forms. And that meant we had to go back and bring in experts who look at their specifications. And that took time. So by the time we, w we were getting the final report to go to the tender, it was sometimes in April. And that's why we went for restricted tender. And in the restricted tender, what we did was to invite uh, every other company that had participated in the initial tender. Yes. As well as... When did that process end? That process ended. Who did you award it to? No, we did not award anyone because it pro the uh, we did not comp uh, uh, yeah. co complete the process. Right. Uh, yeah. so because of, because Roskett went to challenge yes. it again. Yes. But then that is what I'm saying. The Public Procurement Review Board says very, said very well that IBC's procurement engaged in underhand dealings, including selling specifications for the benefit of other companies. No, this this, this is the why there's been concerns about right, al right. and whether all this was meant to have al get the tender at all costs. And I'll explain to you what happened. Uh, because this, the way in which the law uh, is structured when it comes to restricted tender, there's a provision in law that says that when you, um, uh, you go for restricted tender, put out a notice on the website indicating that your intention of doing that, the restricted tender, uh, or, or you're going for restricted tender. So what my team did was to upload the tender document with a note on the website indicating that, yes, we are going for restricted tender for this particular purpose. But then there was this raw schedule that came. We believe they downloaded the document from the, from, from the website mm -hmm. and went to our finance office and paid 1,000 shillings. And that's how it gave them the legitimacy to come to challenge the tendering process. Okay, yeah. so the review board says something different. Anyway, we, we will not waste a lot of time uh, on that, but that is why there have been concerns about uh, al are getting this. Ultimately, right. uh, you've had the opposition, a key stakeholder just like uh, the Jubilee and other uh, parties right. in this uh, election saying they would want this tender again terminated. They would, they're not comfortable with al -Ghurayr. I what do you do? I think what they said was uh, the IBC to do the right thing. Uh, in as far as we're concerned, 
we looked at the situation, uh, we reviewed all the options available, and we thought the decision to award to Lugrea was the right thing to do. And given that it was a direct procurement, indirect procurement, you also don't just wake up in the morning and say, okay, I'm going to go south. There are certain conditions that must be fulfilled. And those conditions could only be, be made in this circumstance by uh, Alugrea. And that's why we went to them. Okay. So we think it was, uh, it was legal and it was also the right thing to do if we have to really have elections uh, in August. Previous elections have shown this is where we have a problem. Right. Especially the two key tenders, technology and ballot paper. Right. Now, ultimately, I mean, the election technology tender which was awarded to Safran has also been criticized. There's been con concerns about it, uh, controversy around it. Ultimately, the two key tenders and components of the election process, that is the technology and ballot papers, mm -hmm. uh, have been marred by controversy, just like in 2013. Right. Isn't that a failure on your part? I can tell you. We are so different now compared to where we were in 2013. In terms of these two key, these two two key, key tenders, key yeah, exactly. it's the same problems we've had, isn't it? Not at all. If you look at what happened in 2013 when it comes to technology, we had so many companies fighting for different solutions to supply to the Commission. But in this case, we went for an integrated system. And when we got to a situation whereby the law had stated that by the 10th of April, you needed to have heard the technology to be, to, to be used in the election mm -hmm. in a place. Mm -hmm. And remember, it's not the Commission that designed that law. Four years after the elections, Parliament sat down and in October passed law requiring that we put in technology in place eight months before the election. Okay. It's us what you went back to Parliament and told them, please, can you reduce that time a little bit because it's not going to be practical. Right. And when you realize that we are about to violate a particular uh, uh, provision of the law, we said then the only alternative is to work backwards and see what are the options available to us. Which and exactly then it, it, we ended up to getting Safran on board. That's it's a tender again. No, no. Safran was direct procurement. Okay, and this is why Gemalto went, there's another company went to the review board again, and we saw the review board again saying you should issue that tender to Gemalto. And this no, is no, saying no, no, all, no. Of, all of that, that, that is what happened. No, 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 no. Uh, the review board never said issue the tender to Gemalto. The review board said go back, complete the evaluation of Gemalto, of, isn't it? Of Gemalto because it was the only company that had been technically evaluated. And for us, if you look at that process of Gemalto, from what was remaining, the obvious thing, based on the law, was such that we're going to sign the contract sometimes on 26th mm -hmm. of April, okay. which was beyond the legal timeline that we had been provided for. And that, that is why you law. resorted to Safran yeah, then? to Safran. Okay. Yeah. So either way, you would agree that it wasn't smooth sailing, isn't it? It has not been smooth. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. It's in that failure, but that's what I'm asking. It's not a failure. But if you look at the content in terms of how we manage the process, the thing is that we had to make sure that we fulfill our legal obligation legally okay. and doing the right thing at the time. Speaking of election technology right. because of time, um, when will it be tested and how will you go about it? Well, the law talks about testing, verifying, certifying and deployment of technology 60 days before the election and on the 9th of June we at least uh, demonstrated to the country that we have technology as far as results trans transmission and verification is concerned and uh, I think the audience that was participating in that mm -hmm. particular exercise mm -hmm. were appreciated. We, we got a lot of positive feedback. However, given the nature of technology, uh, our aim is that we carry out a series of, uh, of, 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 of tests. Uh, we have one more test coming up uh, in the first week of July and another test after we would have deployed all the technology in, uh, to the field and trained officers, we want to carry out a simulation at least three days before the election to certify ourselves that we are ready uh, to deploy. Simulation of the whole exercise, of exactly. the pilot, uh, pilot areas. No, we will be able to map out. It might take half of the country. It mm -hmm. might be a quarter of the country, depending on the resources that we have at the time. That would be the next big exercise we will see from IBC in terms of testing? No, no, no. We have one in July, the first week uh, of, of July. And here we are concerned about uh, stress testing, uh, a bit of security issues. So the best way of testing is, is, is progress. Pro we must do it progressively. progressively. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. James Ogutu in Migori on double two four double two says, "Hi, saying it is evident the IBC is not ready for the election. What is happening with the names of the dead in the elections register, which you're supposed to yes. release next week?" Yes. Okay. Uh, we. The names of the date, uh, so far we are sure of 92,000 
based on the KPMG report. And by tomorrow, hopefully by tomorrow evening, we think uh, we'll have deleted those names from, from the register. KPMG was concerned that it could get actually to about a 1 million, isn't it? Yeah, they said uh, you could get to, and it was based on a statistics right. uh, given by the, the National Bureau of Statistics yeah. and other agencies. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for you to be able to deal with data or voters, you must be exact. This 1 million, who are there? And the problem we've heard is that uh, the civil registry that keeps the record of, 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 of uh, deceased persons is not digitized and getting that data together uh, uh, is not very easy. And sometimes it's based on data that is submitted by people uh, or families who have been uh, bereaved. So in this case, uh, you'll find that we don't have adequate information uh, at the civil registry to allow us to address the issue of the one million. Right. But one thing I can guarantee you, mm -hmm that on the election day, you show up, any person who is alive, they'll be able to be identified biometrically as our primary form of identification. And so what you're know, saying is yeah. that, now you're, you're talking about 92,000, as exactly, yeah. 92,000 about, yeah. thereabouts. Right. But this concerns of the, that it could reach one million, um, there's no dead voter that will vote. There's no way the a dead voter, uh, there'll be no dead voter, there'll be no deceased person Obviously. who will show up to vote on the election day. There'll be no. You know what I mean when I say dead yeah. voter? Uh, yes, yes. I mean it's the problem that has been yeah. here in, the, yes, been in, yes. in this country yeah. in, in yeah. previous yeah. elections. There'll be none at all. Such a thing will not happen. It will not happen. Why? The because reason? the technology we are using, the primary form of identification is your biometrics. So you yeah. must show up, mm -hmm. place your fingers on the on the machine and be able to identify you if we can't then most likely you're not going to vote so this uh, this concerns were raised sometime in December right uh, and th it was I mean it was really heated politically right. in this country right so what if the technology fails now the law also sets out the procedure uh, in terms of what to do uh, when technology fails and it must fail completely and what the law now and uh, 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 states is that the officer who is operating that kit should be able to alert the returning officer in the mm -hmm. constituency telling them that the kit has failed and there will be witnesses in that particular area to prove that, to prove that it has failed. There will be a form to be filled by the voter, witnessed by the agents in that particular polling station before you are allowed to vote and there will be a record tracking the but number of ballot papers. That cannot be foolproof, can it? As, as the technology should be, isn't it? No, I mean, I think it's complementary in the sense that... But it doesn't really work. Given the statistics, mm -hmm. I mean, you're doing 100% uh, 41 polling stations uh, uh, distribution of kits. For you to be able to mess up with the election, I don't think you'd be interested in one voter. Okay. And statistically, if we see there's a trend that is, n uh, that, that is not consistent with what we expect, then we are able to tell there's a problem somewhere. Right. And this is not what you expect. What we're going to, what, what we expect yeah, we don't want to be cynics, but yeah. you never know. Yeah. Right. Again, questions over deployment of returning officers. And many have pointed again to yeah. whether there's a rift within the IBC, the Commission, and the Secretariat that is led by you. Um, concerns over ethnicity of returning officers that may have been looked when they were being deployed. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had politicians talk about it about uh, several times. And in <coughs> fact, the Commission chair in public, that is Chabukati, alluded to not having been consulted before the postings were done, saying the postings should have had uh, a human face. Now, I really want to get into the details of that, but I think the principle is very critical. Uh, if you look at the posting uh, of our offices, uh, we looked at certain factors. The criteria that we set out included uh, somebody should not be posted in their own home county. And you were supposed to be moved either to at least one county. The farthest needed to go was the second county uh, within your area. And if you follow that pattern, obviously it will mean that people in Rift Valley, for example, they find themselves in Western. If you follow that particular that is, like, that is why yeah. politicians from Western have been having... Yeah, and I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing about uh, officers. Every day I receive complaints from politicians about uh, returning officers. The politicians will come to you and say, please, send me a certain type of person in my particular place. It tells you something. What is it that returning officers do that politicians fear much? I think it's important 
for us as an institution to be, al to be allowed to be able to make our own independent judgment. Okay, but what, does it, say, what does it say when the chair of the commis commission <coughs> talked about not really being consulted in this matter? No, that was not the case. Uh, it uh, was the case. What? He said this thing should have been done differently. He actually said it publicly. Yeah, he said it should have been done differently. But that does not mean there was, there was no consultation. We had consultations all along. And the difference was that there were officers who were going through some training on technology at uh, LICO. So at the time they were still going through the training, the report on transfers came out. So that caused a little bit of anxiety among the officers. And I think that was the point of departure. It's just a question of communication at that particular time. But it's not that there was disagreement on how to post the officers. What he said what he said was definitely different because if you say you, you had talked about this prior why would he say it in public that it should have been done differently? No, I'm just emphasizing the point that there was a communication issue when how to release that particular list and if you look at the list by the way that was released earlier and the final list they're the same list other than the appeals that we were dealing with uh -huh. after complaints came up. Okay, finally yeah. um, a multi-agency team, of course, you know, IBC, ESEC, Attorney General, right. Director of Public Prosecutions, DCI, uh, Department of Immigration and Registration, and Commission of University Education were vetting political aspirants. We saw a list released uh, last week by IBC right. uh, coming from EACC. Uh, there have been concerns. First, from that team, we haven't heard from the IBC really. Was there any recommendation to bar anyone from vying? Uh, there was no recommendation. <coughs> Excuse me. There's no recommendation to bar anyone. Uh, what we did was, I mean, what we received from the ESCC was a report uh, for candidates that could be uh, subject to uh, Chapter 6 and as far as decision making to clear them or not. And uh, they categorized the cases. Uh, we had situations whereby individuals had been convicted. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a report on individuals who are still being investigated. Mm -hmm. We had cases where ESCC had said we have investigated and we found them culpable. But you know, in the process of justice, it doesn't end with ESCC. So when we received the report, it was very clear to us that for cases that we had uh, Conviction. convictions, those are straightforward so cases. So the only person who will be barred is somebody who has been convicted. That's yes. what you're saying. Nobody At least in barred. this case, the evidence that we had, that was adequate information to justify barring that particular person. Conviction. Conviction. Conviction was adequate information. Yes. Not evidence of an investigation going on or how, how I mean, major the evidence is. Right. Or that, that doesn't matter. That did not matter. And the reason is, when you're saying investigations, up to what point have you investigated this matter? And what have you done a about it? If the investigation is such a that there are conclusions you can make that are obvious, for example, when it comes to academic uh, qualifications, yeah. you know, the only thing you need to do is to verify with the relevant institutions. Okay. And you, it makes your work very easy. So has that been done? Has, has all the background checking been done? No, we have All the aspirants? We have. Or should we expect going forward to the AGA selection, some of the people who may have faked the academic qualifications may be bad. Is that what you're saying? Uh, that's what I'm saying, and I'm telling you, is a continuous process. What until we realize the election day, until the election day, even after the election day, this is because you work on evidence, and if there be evidence even after the election showing that an individual was not qualified to run, and that evidence can stand mm -hmm. the test of law, then we should be able to take necessary action. And I think we've had those cases before. So it's not over until it's over. Okay, finally, how prepared is IBC now uh, for the August election? Well, and the poll question, of course, you're asking tonight. Yes. I mean, you should also yes. respond yeah. to that, but IBC yeah. is ready for this. I can tell you that we do nothing else other than preparing for the elections. Uh, if you look at all our processes, we're remaining with just a few critical issues. In this case, it's getting the register right. We are now cleaning up the register based on the audit uh, uh, and the verification process that we undertook mm -hmm. in the last uh, one month. Uh, once we get the register right, I think we will be even much closer. Our technology, uh, testing and testing it over and over again. We just recruiting 300 and about to recruit 360,000 uh, election officials from across the country. That process is going on. So if you ask me that again, 
<laughs> in the next uh, 15 days i mean i'll be i'll be telling you i'm sleeping much more but for now i'm not because we're trying to make sure that we we're getting there right yeah it's a tough job uh, either way but thank you so much for making time for us and we wish you all the best i want to appreciate and i just want to assure kenyans uh, over this the commission both the commissioners and the secretariat have got no other interest other than uh, securing a credible and peaceful election come 2013. We may have our own differences in this country, but that's the essence of democracy. What we need is that we must work together, respect institutions, and let us know that we must live together as brothers and sisters. Just as you may want a free and fair election, so am I. And we can work together to make this country far much better than what we have today. All right, thank you thank so much. That is just actually our CEO, IABC. We are asking you tonight if you think IBC is ready for the August election. This is the Twitter poll. We have the results now. Of course, that's not scientific. 53% say no. <laughs> and 47% uh, say yes. We'll sample your views and your responses and why you say yes or no uh, later on. Thank you again for making time for us. Uh, keep talking to us. The hashtag is the big question. You can text us on 22422. We're back after this break.